Hello and welcome to Network. My name is Spumele Lezundi with your technology and social media news. Today I'm coming to you from the Cape Town International Convention Center where AfricaCom is taking place. Remember that if you want to be a part of this tech discussion, hashtag SABC Network or you can find us on SABC Network. Now that is on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. It's News Network at SABC.co.za on email if you want to write to us over them. Here's what's coming up in the program. We tell you about the 20 years of Africa come. We also tell you about the most expensive phone in South Africa. Our discussion is with Telecommunications Minister Siabonga Twele. We must digitize our content as government because that's what is going to drive the use. But first, your technology and social media news. AfricaCom, taking place here at the International Convention Center at Cape Town, is now in its 20th year. Let's find out what's going on here. In the two decades of the existence of AfricaCom, the conference and exhibition has grown to be the biggest in the tech space in Africa. It began as a telecoms event 20 years ago, and over the time it's evolved um, as telecoms has, so now it's about more than connectivity, it's digital transformation, um, a whole range of different topics covering everything from sort of telecoms infrastructure to IoT and digital health, um, and it's a, a trade show. Exhibitors come from all over the African continent and the rest of the world. Here, we met a group from Angola Cables. We have cables that are linking from London up to South Africa, and touching 11 countries in Africa and three countries in Europe. And we are now building two new, two new cables, okay? One is crossing Angola to Brazil, and another one is crossing Brazil to the US. The Just Networks came all the way from India. We design, manufacture, and uh, develop uh, solutions, which is optical transport products. And uh, we've got the technology, uh, all the technology from uh, OTN, PTN, ASON, GPON, DWDM, we are going gone into terabytes. We manufacture uh, telecom equipment, broadband equipment. There was a Geoscan from Russia. Apart from being a software company, they design and manufacture drones. So we produce the fixed wind drones uh, and quadcopter drones for mining. Many others came from various spaces in the technology sector. They're here to be seen to do business and get what they do into new markets. There are also many conversations which the South African government says are important to have. It's a platform where we create dialogue and discussion to say, well, here we are, where are we going to, what are the challenges, and how can we then move together, private sector and government, to ensure that our people get the best service that they deserve. Organizers say they're happy with the quality of conversations that take place here. The core part of the show, I think, is, is dialogue between the, the, the people driving Africa's digital transformation. So yeah, I think it's, it's about learning, it's about sharing ideas and experiences. There, there's a huge amount of convergence in the industry. AfricaCom is also the biggest technology conference and exhibition about the African continent in the world. Some of the conversations that have been taking place here at AfricaCom have touched on technology in Africa, 5G versus LTE, and the digital divide. In Africa, not that many people have LTE networks, while the rest of the world is already discussing moving towards 5G. What you tend to find is most of the connectivity is actually focused on the cities. Um, so if you look at uh, you know, places like Johannesburg, for instance, um, it's, it's fairly well connected from the point of view of having uh, 3G or 4G uh, available across most of uh, the city. You've even got public Wi-Fi spaces. And similarly so, you know, if you travel to uh, Nairobi, Lagos, um, all of those places tend to have relatively good mobile access. The trick is still to make that mobile access as affordable as possible and then to make sure that people have devices that can actually help them use that, that data and that connectivity. You need connectivity to make people communicate and share ideas, share uh, information and also connectivity has to be valuable in terms of providing value in the people's lives. Some say the focus needs to still be on improving networks in Africa. If this doesn't happen, some delegates at AfricaCom feel the digital divide will worsen. I think we're now hitting what I call the start of, of, of a 
dangerous period, a transitional paralysis. The rest of the world is now transitioning from 4G to 5G. You know, 4G networks are now mature. You're seeing gigabit capability. You're seeing ubiquitous networks. And the reason for that is you're seeing that the developed markets have got a low band, a mid band, and a high band issued. And that allows you for a fully optimized cost per bit effective 4G network. What we have in this part of the world is capacity bands in the high end. So that's why our network rollouts have been relegated to cities and urban areas at a higher cost because you need more cells. The higher the band, the more cells you need. In conversations here, they've been sharing how they think they can help. Trying to facilitate the supply, first of all. And when we talk about the supply, we can talk about uh, the spectrum, the site, uh, fibers, and also the network resources as well. Facilitating the supply in a very high efficiency is very important for connectivity for Africa. We have a product which enables small businesses to list themselves, that makes them available on a map, that enables people who want to search for a service or product to find them, connect with them, perhaps make a phone call. Um, and just having that presence is really the absolute first step for most small businesses. Despite the worry to sort out LTE networks, some say Africa should also be talking about how 5G can assist in solving problems in Africa in order to help local industries. This will obviously bring the excitement of the Internet of Things, seeing that we're very industrial driven, we're very commodity driven. How can we add value to our diamonds, to our copper, to our uranium, using now the power of the bandwidth? in the low latency that 5G um, brings. I think we're going to see smart communities driven by safety, driven by engagement with, uh, with the community, so smart community engagement, managing the, the core uh, of the challenges we faced in Africa before we see you know, the, the top end of that. But some have raised the issue of spectrum that they say isn't available in South Africa in order to improve already existing networks. Government has said that this is something that they are working on. We also went to the launch of what is now the most expensive phone in South Africa. Does just under 27,000 rand sound okay? Huawei has finally decided to release the Mate 10 range in South Africa, but they're going for the high range Mate 10 Pro and the even more expensive Posh Design Mate 10. They both have a dual SIM card ports. It's also the world's first device to have a dual f1.6 aperture for extreme low light photography. We've got the world's first Mali G72 GPU to enhance your gaming experience. And also it's the world's first device to be certified safe um, in terms of fast charging technology by TUV Rainland. So this, this device actually shows our capability in terms of innovation um, and consumer enhanced experience. They've removed the headphone jack. They say this is because they've made it water and dust resistant. It's the first time Huawei is attempting this feature, which exists on other smartphone brands. Some tech journalists say they're not happy with that. Something I don't like is the removal of the 3.5 millimeter jack. Um, primarily because to me it kind of feels like you're putting a premium on consuming media. Well, I think it's become such a staple in so many people's lives that it, it does still feel a bit jarring to have it being taken away. But I think, you know, the world's moving towards that, so the more people get used to it, the easier it's going to become. Huawei also boasts about artificial intelligence features here, as they demonstrated how they work, even when the phone is on flight mode. I think their AI integration, what they're planning there is innovative, first in space, and I think it's going to be set the tone for really, really exciting for into the future. The AI processor is groundbreaking for our, for our, for our country at least. One of those is language recognition, but they partnered with Microsoft in this. The only South African language, however, that's been included is Afrikaans. The biggest South African first languages, Zulu and Kosa, have also been left out. The South African language is at the moment because this is a third-party application. It's run and created by Microsoft. It's just been optimized to work on the NPU. Um, the only South African language that's available currently is Afrikaans, and Microsoft is working on bringing more South African languages to the market. The Porsche Design Mate 10 is clearly a luxury smartphone, 
Only less than a thousand of these will be released in South Africa as it goes for the recommended price tag of sub 27,000 rand. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll have a chat with Telecommunications Minister Siabonga Twele. Today on Rights and Recourse, we will unpack the new traditional court mark. The idea of the bill is not to overregulate, uh, to basically set the principles. The most important aspect of this bill is that it understands that customary law by its nature is consensual. That I have a right to affiliate, I have a right therefore to opt in, and I have a right to opt out. The opt out provision is, is basically one that you've got to respect the court in, in the sense of if you've been summonsed, you've got to tell the, the clerk of the court at least that you're not willing to attend. The challenge that I would like to throw to the Department of Justice, it has to ensure, come up with mechanisms of ensuring that people who exercise their right to opt out or to opt in are not in any way victimized. Hashtag rights with Dumi Lamates on legal issues every Sunday at two o'clock Central African time. A lot of us rely on tech to survive, and Africa is already a mobile first continent. We build a mobile technology that connects motorcycle taxis to commuters and businesses in real time. My phone was that the most important thing. Africans are using technology to innovate. On network, we have African technology and social media news. Even robots have heard about us. Hello, watch Network on SIBC. For African technology and social media news, join Ms. Pumela Lezondi on Network every Sunday at 9 p.m. Welcome back. We are still at the Cape Town International Convention Center at AfricaCom. It's SABC Network on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And we had a conversation with Siabong Aktuele, who is South Africa's telecommunications minister. As you know, there are still a lot of people in Africa who are not connected to the uh, war offline. Uh, others estimate about 450 million, it's quite a lot. But uh, then we can't just ignore them. We have to find a mechanism on how we actually improve connectivity to those people, improve their skills, and uh, ensuring that they've got accessible and affordable devices, and they have a relevant content which talks to the African situation we're facing. So we don't just import things which are more applicable to develop world, but things which are relevant to our own material condition and situation. If we can solve the most pressing uh, problems confronting the African societies, then it will be a relevant technology to us. Mm. Um, and uh, some people are complaining about the digital divide and, mm. the, and how that gap seems to be widening, especially since the rural areas don't have connection to LTE. Is there anything that's being done in order to close that gap? We, we have to, because that divide is actually worsening the existing divides, whether it's social or economic divides in our society, we cannot afford to deepen them. In order to reduce that divide, we must make sure that we come with new methods of connecting rural people. We must focus on their needs. We must make sure that the data which we talk about is affordable to them. We must make sure that the devices are not complicated, are simple enough for their use. We must digitize our content as government because that's what is going to drive the use. If uh, an old lady from Anduli can know that this ICT can solve her problems of going to queues and all those things, then they'll use the... So we have to work with uh, big and small network operators because 
big network operators on their own, they won't be able to solve the problem which are confronting our people in those rural areas. But as governments, ourselves, through universal access uh, funds, we must invest in those areas as a matter of uh, agency, all of us. We must, uh, as African countries, start creating connecting networks and reduce the cost of transborder uh, transmission of these data or communication. Is it just a pipe dream though or are there possibilities? Is there work that's being done that's helping it, on that? Definitely in South Africa it's not a pipe dream and I'm sure in most African countries. As you know, uh, for instance this year through the Universal Service and Access Fund we started rolling out a broadband network using SMMEs in OR Tambo districts. Yes, it's the most difficult district to connect. Yes, there will be challenges as we connect but at least people in some of those villages are now able to receive affordable internet. So it's not just a, also a rolling out in other eight districts, but also the industry is starting to realize that there's money to be made even in those rural areas. Mm. They're upgrading their network, they're investing in our economy. So it's not a pipe dream. And uh, the, the, the critical thing for us, like we said, we launched also in Durban this internet for all initiative where yes. we are partnering with the uh, industry and other stakeholders from society. Uh, those are the things where we form partnerships other than acting as standalone entities to, that we can have impact because all of us are serving the citizens of South Africa. Um, and Minister, the rest of the world is talking about 5G technology. The complaint here in South Africa is that there's no spectrum for this 5G technology. Are we going to get there? Are we are going to get there. The current challenges we're seeing were at a 4G technology. Yes, there is congestion there. Uh, yes, we have been delayed by the digital migration program. But we have been engaging the industry, we have been looking at uh, all the methods where we can try and reduce this congestion there. Uh, the industry players, they call it that they are running out of oxygen because they need more spectrum so that they can reduce the cost of deployment of their infrastructure. That has become even more relevant now that our economy is growing very slow, that we continue to encourage them. And uh, we did a study with uh, CSIR, we'll soon be taking the results of the study to cabinet so that we can go back to the industry and see if there's any additional spectrum which can be licensed to them. Right, and lastly, do you enjoy participation, participating rather at these particular uh, conferences? I do, I do. It, it, it opens a lot of our eyes. I've been uh, had an opportunity as a deployee, as a minister, that uh, I also represent South Africa in a, a Smart Africa initiative. I represent South Africa in the BRICS Forum. I represent South Africa in the UN Broadband Council. And because you get real ideas on how to solve problems of developing countries like ours. Uh, we also were not just aspiring to remain a developing country. Yes. We want to compete with the best in the world as, as, as a country. That's why we also participate in fora like the G20 yes. uh, ICT ministers. So those are the things which help us uh, to see what is happening in the rest of the world, but more importantly, how can we apply that to be relevant in a situation like South Africa? That's the Minister of Telecommunications, Siabonga Kwele. We also caught up with ex Cape Town goalkeeper Brandon Peterson. He told us what his favorite piece of technology is. Hi, my name is Brandon Peterson, goalkeeper of Ajax Cape Town. And my favorite piece of technology is definitely my smartphone. To be more specific, my Huawei P10. I definitely like it because of all the features it had. And definitely for the camera because my fiance likes photos. So, you know, every now and then you have to take a beautiful photo and because of the beauty mode to make me look as beautiful as she does.
A meteorite hit the Earth two million years ago, creating an enormous impact of crater, about 10 kilometers in diameter near Federford in the Free State. A hundred kilometers southwest of Johannesburg, now known as the Federford Dome, a South African World Heritage Site. The meteorite is said to have been larger than Table Mountain and caused a thousand megaton blast of energy. The impact would have heated about 70 cubic kilometers of rock and have increased the Earth's oxygen levels to a degree that made the development of multicellular life possible. The world has about 130 crater structures of possible impact origin. The Fredford Dome is the largest in the world, followed by Southbury Crater in Canada and the Chicloop Crater in Mexico. Show me a greater power on the whole continent of Africa. Show me a greater power anyway. 6th of June 1918 was the establishment of our movement to maintain that. We need to do something about the educational upliftment of the Afrikaner and we also need to do something about the economic uh, upliftment of the Afrikaner. And that was the two main goals at that stage in 1918. The Brotherhood never was a cultural organization. It was a state capturing organization. It is, in fact... I like that term. It, it, it has captured the financial systems. It has captured the, the parastatals. It has captured cultural organizations. For all your constitutional and legal matters, tune into Rights and Recourse on Sundays between 2 and 3 Central African time. Welcome back to the program. It is SABC Network on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. We're still at the Cape Town International Convention Center where AfricaCom is taking place. But here's what else took place in the rest of the technology space. A self-driving shuttle bus was hit by a truck just an hour after its debut in Las Vegas. The truck was backing up and um at his angle, it's like a 45 degree angle while he's like trying to back into the alleyway, he just couldn't see, he just couldn't see the shuttle and the shuttle didn't have the ability to move back either, like the shuttle just stayed still. The Sin City police cited the driver of the delivery truck for failing to yield and slamming into the shuttle's front bumper. This is another argument for why autonomous technology is so important because it needs to be able to look at how humans make decisions and in this case, the, this performed the way it was designed. Unfortunately, the truck driver uh, didn't yield to the shuttle. However, on the bright side, no injuries were reported. Now moving on to Europe. A Portuguese journalist, James Vlahos, has developed a unique way to cope with the loss of his father, John, who died of lung cancer in February. He has created DadBot, an artificial intelligence chatbot in his father's image. Vlahos recorded a series of audio interviews with his father during his final months on subjects such as his family history, education and career. We were losing my dad and I knew I couldn't stop that, uh, but I and my family, we just wanted to kind of preserve him in any way we could um, to have his story recorded and also to um, have little aspects of his personality preserved as well. Vlahos is in Lisbon at the Web Summit 2017 to present his invention to what has been billed as the best technology conference on the planet. The DadBot is a chatbot that you interact with on Facebook Messenger that allows me or anyone who uses it to send little messages and get messages back um, to have a conversation, as it were, with my dad and to ask him about different parts of his life and have him tell stories about that and also to hear him sing some of his favorite songs, tell some of his favorite jokes, uh, just hear little stories from his life. What will we do to the Stanford Lights on that great day? We'll celebrate them on that night after we play. We now declare our is on. Victory is near. Hit him again, boys. Hit him again, boys. Harder. Vlahos hopes to develop the app to allow others to have the same post-death relationship with their deceased parents as he now enjoys. Now back to the U.S. of A. 
Uber has struck a deal with NASA to develop software for managing flying taxi routes in the air along the lines of ride-hailing services it has pioneered on the ground, the company said on Wednesday. In 2023, um, that'll be full, you know, kind of, uh, you know, paid passenger flights happening. So, you know, you'll be able to literally, um, you know, on your smartphone, uh, with the Uber app, you'll be able to push a button and choose Uber Air as one of the options. The company is looking to speed development of a new industry of electric on-demand urban air taxis, which customers could order up via smartphones in ways that parallel the ground-based taxi alternatives it has popularized while expanding into more than 600 sites since 2011. Manufacturers of the Energizer phone also exhibited here at Africacom. They say their phone doesn't crack when you drop it. I put this to the test. We are going now to launch our new mobile phones it's a uh, rugged phone, the Energizer uh, A520 LTE. It's the first time in South Africa. So everyone knows the Energizer by the battery. So we are bringing now the last, uh, last long testing sorry, about the battery. So this is our power. So we add it in the phone now. Our product, we bring IP68 with US Army drop test and everything. So we are now uh, add 4,000 battery inside. So it's a new guy. It is SABC Network on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Use network at sabc.co.za on email. Find us or write to us over there. Now from me, it's Pumele Lezondi and the rest of the team right here in Cape Town. Have a good one. Bye-bye.